Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world of Pixelmon. Today, I'll be surviving for 100 days. For those of you that are new, Pixelmon is a Minecraft mod that combines the world of Pokemon and Minecraft together. When I was younger, I used to play every single Pokemon I could convince my parents to buy me, which is why Pixelmon is one of my favorite mods of all time. I decided to spend my 100 days surviving on the Anubis MC server so that I could play with other Pokemon trainers. Anubis MC also has extra features like custom gyms, an Elite Four, Pokemon raid bosses, EV training, and a ton more features. I'm going to leave a link at the top of the description that will teach you how to install Pixelmon and play on my server so that you can join me when I survive for 200 days. Or if you already have the Pixelmon mod, you can add the server IP play.anubismc.com in your multiplayer server section. I have quite a few goals for these 100 days. I'm not sure if I'll complete all of them, but we're gonna try. My first one is to make a base and start up Cookie City. There, you guys can actually join and build your own houses. I also want to finish at least 10% of the Pokédex, defeat all 8 gyms and the Elite Four, catch a legendary Pokémon, and lastly, train a team of 6 Pokémon to level 100. Some of these are a little bit more difficult than the others, so be sure to watch until the end of today's video to see if I can accomplish all of them. Also comment some other challenges you would want me to do when I survive for 200 days. And while you're down there, ladies and gentlemen, smash like! This video took a ton of time to make, and and if you do enjoy, consider subscribing. But without further ado, here is 100 Days in the World of Pixelmon. So ladies and gentlemen, it is officially day one on Pixelmon. Now, right now, uh, we're actually in the hub, so if you do join the server, which I believe that you should, especially if you want to join in on this series, uh, you're going to go over to this Pixelmon man. I think it's Ash Ketchum. Once you right-click on him, you will be greeted with the Pixelmon selection screen. Just like every single Pokemon game, you will have to make the toughest decision of your life. Which Pokemon do you want to start with in your Pokemon journey? Personally, I have to go with the OG Charmander. This was the first ever Pokemon that I picked out when I was like nine years old. So there's a lot of nostalgia here and I have decided to go with Charmander. After you pick out your starter Pokemon, you will be teleported to the spawn of Anubis. This is where your Pokemon adventure begins and this is where my first 100 days on the server will commence. What the heck? That is the most buff bug I've ever seen in my entire life. In my inventory, it looks like I have an Anubis helper. This has information on everything on the server that you could ever want. By the way, for those of you guys that did not see the IP, it is anubismc.com. If you guys do want to join me on my journey, everything including a tutorial on how to install this mod will be linked down below in the description of today's episode. Because I have no idea what I'm doing, I decided to right click on help. So on this server, you're actually able to vote in order to promote the server. And in exchange, you'll be able to buy different things like crate keys. It turns out voting for the server on multiple different websites is a great way to get a ton of free items. I even received a master ball. Next up, I wanted to assert my dominance because I wanted to catch them all and be the best trainer on the server. So I decided to challenge Bobasaur. Bobasaur, you have met your match. Level five Charmander. It turns out Bobasaur was extremely overpowered and had a 100 level Scolipede. I think Ember should do the trick here. No, it did not. I died. And that's basically all I did in day one. We also have a vote crate to open since I voted for the server. We can get a lot of different things but I really hope- Oh, we got one orb of frozen souls. So I believe I should be able to use this to eventually get an Articuno. The only thing is I need to collect the souls of different Pokemon. Since one of my objectives was to catch a legendary, this was going to be perfect. Over here, I discovered they had an EV training area. This area is great for killing extremely low level Pokemon and also leveling up your Pokemon. For those of you guys that don't know, every Pokemon is born with an IV. That set, it can only be increased by breeding the different Pokemon together in order to increase the IVs. But you can also train your Pokemon and max out their EVs, which will make them extremely powerful. Since all of this EV trainer's Pokemon were level one, I was able to quickly level up my Charmander. My goal for today is to evolve my Charmander into a Charmeleon. The quicker I can evolve the Charmeleon into a Charizard, the better. I don't know why I said Charizard so weird. Then once I have a Charizard, I'll be able to fly around this entire Pixelmon world to find any single Pokemon that I want. And by the end of day two, my Charmander was evolved 
evolving into a Charmeleon. They just grow up so fast. On day three, I decided to start off my journey and claim an area for my brand new Cookie City. If you do slash RTP in the chat, you will be randomly teleported to a location somewhere in the world. Off in the distance, I noticed a giant structure. I wasn't sure if it was a player's base or something from the Pixelmon mod. Even though it was very dark and scary out, I decided I should check it out. This place is massive. It doesn't look like anybody lives here. Actually, I take that back. Somebody has definitely been grinding. They have their own different breeding areas. For those of you guys that don't know, the different breeding areas are used to create brand new Pokemon. The blocks beneath them dictate the different Pokemon that can breed. They also had an entire apricorn farm. I believe you can sell these or you can use them in order to create different types of Pokeballs. They were kind of just left alone, so I decided it would be a pretty good idea to take all of them. If the person watching this episode decides to come back for revenge, please just do not hurt my Charmeleon. I also completely forgot that I didn't claim my starter kit. That'll give me old sneakers, a random shirt, used pants, and lots of Pokeballs. At the end of day three, I realized I haven't caught any other Pokemon, so I decided I would catch an Arbok. It's definitely not the best first Pokemon, but it'll have to do. Come on, come on, come on, give me my first Pokemon. Come on. I just used a Pokeball, but it's burned, so it should help. It broke free! And then it killed me. I decided to try my luck on a level nine Rattata to be my first Pokemon that I catch, but I killed it. On day four, I randomly teleported again and found an amazing area to build my cookie city. I really liked how it was surrounded by mountains so we could have a mountainous city and then in the middle could be my giant town. I also discovered a green boss Firo. I'm always up for a challenge, so I decided I would fight it. I have to say it went really well. I wanted to try my luck at claiming my entire cookie city. So I got out my claim shovel and went to one side of the giant mountainous region. And then I traveled all the way to the other side, right clicked, and I believe I had insignificant <laughs> claim blocks. Okay, this time for sure. Yes, we finally claimed the entire area. If you guys want to find this for yourself on the server, I'll leave my coordinates up in the top left hand of the screen. I also eventually want to create a warp. So as soon as you join the server, you can do slash warp cookie city. But currently that's not set up. And I'm not sure if that'll be set up before I end the 100 days. The next thing I wanted to do was visit the shop. If you type in slash shop, it should pull up everything that you can buy. I started building my house. And let me tell you before I get any comments down below saying how bad this is, please just know that I have really never built anything. Somehow I've been playing Minecraft for over eight years of my entire life. And my building skills are probably worse than that of a three-year-old child. But that's not going to stop me. I'm going to build a very simple base that I can at least store items in. And then I'm hoping that you guys can join the server and build a massive mountainous city around my house. I wanted to make my house really modern at the actual top of the staircase. So I went ahead and bought tons of quartz. Day 10, I wasn't really sure what else to do with my base. I think it looks, uh, you know somewhat good. Eventually, I would like to replace the staircase because it really does not match the style of the house whatsoever. But when we walk inside of the house, you'll notice that the entire thing is extremely open. I think I picked a beautiful location for it because I can look out of my back terrace and see every single Pokemon in the ocean. And then if I walk up the stairs, I was thinking of keeping this open as well, just so I can see the entire city. Obviously there's nothing there now, but if you use your imagination, this place will turn into an amazing Acropolis. Since I still only had a Charmeleon, I decided to go around the plains biome near my house and catch as many as I possibly could. The first Pokemon I ended up capturing was a Mudbray. This would be my trusty steed. Right near my house, I also discovered my first ever wild trainer. It was a close battle, but I ultimately beated the old man and he ran back home to his mom. On day 11, I caught a Geodude. I also captured a Plusle, a Dub Wool, and also a Raticate. I now officially had a party of six Pokemon, and I think this might be the weirdest party of six I've ever seen. I decided I would rename my entire party. We have Sparky Boom Man, Donkey, Geo Bro, Fake Pikachu, Pillow of Dreams, and Six Nine. I was starting to run out of money, so I decided I would go warp to the mines. I've never been to the mines before, but it looks like you're able to get every single ore along with some Pixmon related items. There were a ton of different shards, which I can then use to create actual stones. I believe the stones can eventually be used in order to evolve Pokemon. For the rest of day 11, I decided to just keep mining so that I could get a ton of money in order to buy more Pokeballs. It also looked like I unlocked a brand new ability. If I type in slash skills, we should be able to check out our brand new mining abilities. It looks like we just unlocked a brand new one. 
So if I right click with my pickaxe, we now have a super miner madness ability. This will definitely help with mining for the rest of day 11. After mining for all of day 11, I decided to go to the ore man and sell everything that I had. After that, I realized that somehow I had over 1 million pokey dollars. I'm 99% certain that somebody on the server sent that to me because there is no way I got 1 million dollars mining for just one day. But since I did have so much money, I decided to check out the GTS. This is basically the black market of just things that people sell. You can sell items, Pokemon, and pretty much anything on the entire server. Right here, somebody is selling a level 70 Palkia with perfect or almost perfect IVs. It's a little bit out of my price range. What I really wanted to get was a ton of XP shares for my entire party. That will make it so that every time I defeat a Pokemon in battle, they will all get the experience. I actually managed to buy an XP all, which I'm pretty sure will split up the experience among every single Pokemon in my party. I right clicked to activate the XP all. On day 13, I decided I would test it by randomly teleporting out into the world of Pokemon. I found a young child in the forest and decided I would battle him with my party of six insanely powerful Pokemon. Turns out he only had a Pidgey. While I was walking around, I found a random Ultra Ball in the forest. I believe there are rare items in these. I received something called a Magmarizer. If you guys know what that does, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. In that same day, I found random particles. I found something called a Thick Club. I believe that item makes Cubone and Marowak even stronger. Sadly, I didn't have those Pokemon though, so I continued to search for other Pokemon to destroy in combat. On day 15, I stumbled across a ginormous build and uh, I believe a DJ station? Boop, 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 bop. What? Huh? I was not expecting to find a note block song during my 100 days of surviving in Pixelmon. But am I mad about it? Not at all. I noticed in chat on day 16 that somebody said there was a battle pass. So I typed in slash battle pass in the chat and sure enough, there was an actual battle pass. Just by doing normal things on the server, I have already leveled up to level nine. Let's claim our $10,000, five tokens, an XP share. I guess I probably should have waited and done the battle pass. And also another 25,000 Pokey dollars. I believe I have access to the premium pass as well, so I can get a mega Pokemon crate key. I received so many items from the battle pass. I even got an orb, which we can eventually fill up with Pokemon souls and get one of the legendary birds. Personally, I'm a Moltres guy, so I eventually need to get Moltres. Since I did get a few crate keys, I decided to head back to spawn to open them. I voted again for the server and had access to another vote crate. I got a legendary key, no way. Wait a second, I think I actually have multiple because I voted for the server six times. No way, that's not possible. From a vote crate, I just got my first legendary in Arceus. Sorry, 6'9", gotta replace ya. I also got a mega Pokemon crate. Let's see what we get. I got a mega Kangaskhan. It was level 100. Fake Pikachu, you have been replaced. And to finish off day 16, I opened a legendary crate. Mewtwo, 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 give me Mewtwo. Give me a flippin' Mewtwo. Groudon! Okay, that's not bad. Geo bro, yo, you did well, but uh, we're gonna have to take Groudon. To end off day 16, I flexed my Groudon against this Ray. Quaza. And then I decided it would be a good idea to try to challenge it. I actually killed the Rayquaza with my Arceus. But it turned out he had another Pokemon that was a Lugia named the Baby. I managed to kill it using my level 100 Genghis Khan. But he had another Pokemon also named the Baby. To end day 16, I got absolutely roasted. But honestly, my team is getting extremely strong. And the fact that I could kill some of his legendaries made it seem like I could maybe become the master of Pokemon on this server. Starting day 17, I was feeling pretty confident with my team. Even though I had some low levels, my level 70 Groudon, Arceus, and my level 100 Genghis Khan were ready to take on the first gym. So in order to get to the gyms on Anubis MC, I'm pretty sure you just type in slash gyms. The ground gym, the max level is 20. So we might have a slight issue. Let's see if I can sneak in with a couple level 100s. Hey, how's everybody doing? Oh, level 15? Oh, sweet. So it actually lowers the level of your Pokemon, even if they're over level 20. We managed to fight our way through the first battle. We had a lot more though. It took the entire day, ladies and gentlemen, but I believe we have beaten the rock gym. Yup, there you see it. We got the coal badge. On day 18, I discovered this ginormous Venusaur. I decided to release my Pokemon 
Pokemon at it. I have no idea what this is. It's level 98, but it is massive. This ginormous Pokemon just tanked my entire team. So I decided to leave it and I'll maybe come back later on. By the end of day 18, I started going towards the next gym, but stumbled across the battle tower. I decided I would give it a shot. This could be a good opportunity to level up my entire party. For the rest of days 18, 19, and 20, I just grinded in the battle tower to level up my entire party. On day 20, Donkey started to evolve. Donkey, whatever you do, do not evolve into Shrek. Donkey evolved into a Mudsdale. And at the start of day 21, Sparky Boom Man, aka Charmeleon, started to evolve into a Charizard. Yo, it looks so cool. After evolving my Charizard, I thought it would be disrespectful to not get this man to level 100 so he could be the captain of my entire party. And since the Battle Tower was easily the best way to level up Pokemon, I decided to head back in. Before I engaged in combat though, I turned off my XP all, and I just put an XP on Charizard, so he would be the only one that is sharing experience with whatever Pokemon kills the Battle Tower boss that I'm battling. So for the rest of the day, I decided to speedrun getting Charizard to level 100. This meant that one of my goals was complete. I officially got my starter Charmander to evolve into a Charizard and get it all the way to level 100. Sparky Boom Man was looking fresh. For those of you guys that have known me for quite some time, you know that I love two things, dinosaurs and dragons. So I know for a fact I need to get my hands on Aerodactyl and also Tyrantrum. Both of these were fossil Pokemon, which meant that I needed to go into the ocean biome and mine up fossils. Then I could clean them off and turn them into actual Pokemon. So on day number 22, I decided I would start it out by making a boat and traveling out into the ocean. I jumped right into the water and started noticing some either fossils or shards in the ground. I figured out they were just shards. Fossils were going to be a little bit more difficult to uncover. I also didn't really think about what would happen if I was underwater too long. By using the different voting crates on the server, I managed to get a ton of rare candies, which I'm going to save for my Tyrantrum and Aerodactyl. I found a fossil, but I think I actually might die trying to get it. Swim, Jack. Swim like your life depends on it because it kind of does. Luckily, I made it back to the surface. I won't know exactly which fossil I uncovered until I'm able to clean it off using one of the Pixelmon machines. Here we have another fossil. After almost dying multiple times on day 22 and only collecting two fossils, I decided I was going to need a better way to do this. That's when I remember there is a shop with literally everything that I could ever want. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any fossils in here, but I did find water stones. I believe you can use these to make a full set of armor that allows you to breathe underwater. I could be completely wrong, but it, it was definitely worth the $220,000 that I spent. I tried on the water stone helmet, chest plate, leggings, and also boots, and figured out that it gave me water breathing too. This made things a lot easier, so from days 22 to 25, I decided to just mine fossils. I needed to make sure I got enough so that when I cleaned them off, I would definitely get at least one Aerodactyl and one Tyrantrum. On day 25, I used Donkey in order to catch this octopus po po Pokemon that I never heard of before. This is why I was stuttering. <laughs> Look at how amazing this thing is. This made day 25, I think, one of my favorite days in the entire series. I fed him two of my rare candies because how can you not feed this thing rare candies? At the end of day 25, I went back to my house to clean off my fossils when I realized I really don't have anything to do that. I tried throwing one in the water, but supposedly that didn't work. Somebody on the server told me that I'm actually able to use the spawns machines. I was really hoping they had a place to clean off your fossils. I decided to go underneath the Poke Center and discovered they actually did. So I decided to start putting some of the fossils in the cleaners. Then once they were cleaned off, I was able to put them into the actual fossil machines that will bring them back to life. It took a little bit longer than I expected in order to bring all of the fossils to life. So I was stuck here until day 27. At the end of day 27, I went back to my house, checked my PC, and saw that I got a Kranidos and also an Aerodactyl. These were two of my favorite Pokemon, so I was so glad to have them on my team. I decided I was just going to split my rare candies evenly between the two of them. And just like that, Kranidos was evolving. Now I officially had a Rampart dose and also an Aerodactyl that were both level 33. At the start of day 28, I decided to go back to spawn because when I was there the day before, I noticed there was a donator section. I figured out that these were different kits that you could purchase in order to get some extremely amazing items. The 
Alolan kit, for example, it gives you a legendary key, a shiny legendary, five master balls, and 128 rare candies. So I decided to get it. That meant that I was able to go back over to the crates and open one legendary crate and one shiny legendary crate. Give me some good stuff. Give me Mewtwo. Give me Dialga. I got a Tapu Bulu. Shiny. Give me something nice and shiny and juicy. Shiny Marshadow. I was hoping for a lot better, but I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. I spent the rest of day 28 leveling up my entire team. At this point, I felt pretty confident that I could take down the next gym. The next gym was the fire gym. Considering I had a lot of different fire Pokemon, I wasn't sure how this was going to go. I relied on Aerodactyl and Groudon the most, since they had the most ground and rock moves. I eventually battled my way all the way to the gym leader, and by the end of the day, I had defeated the trainer. Look at that, we got the volcano badge. I was feeling really confident, so I decided to challenge the next gym. And by the end of day 29, I had also completed the fighting gym. Most of day 29, I spent on the GTS, which is a spot where you can buy lots of different Pokemon and also items for sale. I was on the lookout for some Pokemon with perfect IVs or EVs, which means that they would be way more powerful in battle. Somebody is selling this Zapdos, I believe for only $150,000. Yep, definitely want that. At the end of the day, I also bought a Dratini with almost perfect IVs. I wanted to level up Dratini as fast as possible, so it could be one of my strongest Pokemon. And you guys know exactly how to do that at this point. You gotta head over to the Battle Towers. On day 30, Dratini evolved. Yes, we now have a Dragonair. On day 31, Dragonair evolved into a Dragonite. I spent the rest of day 31 leveling up Dragonite, so it was about the same as the rest of my party. Next to the battle tower, I also noticed that there was a battle shop, which I could use my different earnings from the battle tower in order to buy really rare items. I didn't really have that much money, but I wanted to save up for some Mega Stones, so I wanted to get at least one Mega Legendary Evolved Pokemon by the end of the series. On day 32, a Roly Coley decided decided to invade my Minecraft mansion. So I decided it was only fair that I either caught it or probably killed it. Yeah, there was no way I was gonna catch this thing unless maybe one Ultra Ball would do the trick. It actually worked. You're safe now, Roly Coley. At this point, I realized that my entire team was extremely overpowered. Uh, I've already beaten a few of the gyms on Anubis MC, but decided that wasn't enough. I wanted to try to beat all of the gyms. So I warped back to spawn and right clicked on the gym leader. That's when I realized I never fought the ice gym. For the next 10 days, I basically tried to get as far as I could in the gym system. Let's go, I got the glacier badge. Next up was the grass gym. This was probably the easiest gym I faced yet. I didn't even lose one single battle. It was probably because most of my party had fire attacks. After that, we headed straight to the poison gym. This one, I didn't know it at the time, was going to be my hardest one yet. Wait, is it just me or is this Pokemon I'm fighting named Among Us? Okay, he keeps saying Among Us, but like, that's really sus. I had no idea there was a Pokemon named Among Us. You learn something new every day. Eventually, I was able to battle my way to the steel gym. It took a couple days, but I finally defeated the Steel Gym. The next gym was my favorite, the Dragon Gym. I realized that the Dragon Gym was a max level of 90, and some of my Pokemon weren't quite there yet. That's when I realized my entire inventory was filled with rare candies as rewards for beating the other gyms. On day 42, I decided to stop my gym progression because I kept losing to this level 90 Dragon Lady time and time again. So that's when I decided I would probably need to catch more Pokemon and also get a lot stronger before challenging challenging her again. I decided that from day 42 to day 50, I would go out and catch as many Pokemon as I possibly could. So I bought an absurd amount of Ultra Balls and started my journey. Come here, little Pokemon. What? I just found a level 105 Boss Shiny Bidoof. I tried catching it, but it wouldn't let me. I even managed to find the Pokemon version of Bessie. On day 50, I checked my Pokédex, and I realized that I had already completed 11% of the Pokédex, and I've caught 105 different types. I checked out my PC, and I figured out that I had about three pages and a little bit of the fourth page already full. I really wanted to train my party, so I headed over to the EV training area. I went through all of my Pokemon and realized that most of them only had about 50% of their EVs trained. If we were able to get them all up to 100%, then we should be able to take down that dragon gym from earlier. So for the next 10 days, I went ahead and trained at, at literally as hard as I could.
And finally, on day 60, if you guys will look in the bottom left of the chat, you will notice that all of my party has maxed out 100% EVs. Unfortunately, their IVs, uh, yeah, are not maxed out. These are the stats that they are originally given when they spawn in or when you capture them. So yeah, we're kind of stuck with those for now. At this point, I was feeling extremely confident in my team. So I wanted to head back to the dragon gym. But I noticed at spawn, and I'm not sure how I didn't notice before, but there are customers custom texture pixel mana. I actually think somebody may have given me a custom texture Charizard. Dude, what? This is sick. It looks like the Terminator, but it's Charizard. I went to go see if I had any custom textures crates and I actually did. Oh my gosh, we got a Swamper. Wait a second. And that means it should have a custom texture. What? Dude, this is so cool. I'm pretty sure you can get these for yourself as well by checking out the website and purchasing some of these custom texture crates. You might also be able to get them when you vote for the server by typing in slash vote. I've been doing this throughout this entire series and it has given me so many extra crate keys. I found another one. Somebody has this magma Venusaur. Bro, I need to get a lot more of these by the end of the series. By the end of day 60, I had worked my way through the dragon gym again to the leader. Why, hello there. We meet again. I went into the dragon gym leader battle uh, pretty positive, but um, yeah, it took me three whole days to beat this gym boss. She was absolutely cracked at Pixelmon and I have no idea idea why or how. Why? Why are you so good? Please, please just let me win, please. Just once. Yes, finally! I did it! Bro, that took way longer than I thought it would. At that point, I had officially defeated all of the gyms. The next challenge was the Elite Four, but honestly, I didn't think I was ready, so I held off. Don't worry, though. By the end, I challenged the Elite Four, so be sure to stick around for that. On day 64, I checked out the GTS to see if there were any good deals, especially because I feel I'll need some better Pokemon in order to defeat the Elite Four by the end of this video. I did see this level 70 Deoxys with 81% IVs, so I decided to buy it. After that, I checked my bank account and all of the money that players gave me at the start of this series uh, was slowly dwindling away. If you guys remember in one of the first days of this episode, there was somebody that literally donated $1 million. I tried to give it back, but they just kept uh, giving it to me. So yeah, we uh, decided to use it. Don't worry though, because if we eventually do 200 days on this, series, I plan to give away a couple of my top Pokemon. So make sure you're on the server because when that happens, uh, yeah, you're not going to want to miss out. Some of my Pokemon are literally extremely overpowered. Uh, remember that after this video, you can check out how to install and also join the server by clicking on one of the top links in the description down below. After battling gyms and training my party for so long, I honestly was getting a little bit bored. That's when I discovered that there were Poke Hunts on this server. If you type in slash Poke Hunt in the chat, it'll bring up Easy Hunts, Hard Hunts, and Expert Hunts. There were some insane rewards for these. All you had to do was go out and find one of the Pokemon on the Poke Hunt. So from day 64 all the way up until day 75, I did a ton of these. Roll the montage. During those days, I figured out something pretty useful. You can type in slash wiki and type in the Pokemon that you're trying to find information about right after. And then if you hit tab, you can get information on the abilities, the base stats, and also the biome, which I've been using to find all of the Pokemon in the Poke Hunts. Guys, there's a Crobat, and this is one of the expert level Poke Hunts. I've already completed a few of the other ones, but I haven't completed any of the expert ones. Oh, here's my chance. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, how'd I miss? You get so much loot for this too. Yes, let's go. No way. We actually got it. On day 75, I decided I would redeem all of these amazing rewards. Guys, look at this. Look at this. It's crazy. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna retrieve all of them. I just got so much money. 45 Ultra Balls and also 36 Rare Candy that I can use. I highly recommend you guys use the Pokey Hunts because they're not really that difficult and you get so many rewards. Like, I think I just literally made almost $200,000 doing the Pokey Hunts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, th th this is real-time Jack. It's day 75 and I really want to 
complete the Elite Four and also well, whatever comes after the Elite Four. I honestly forget because, uh, yeah, I've been catching Pokemon for way too long, but I want to put together my dream team party. So yesterday in real life, I bought this Deoxys, which has some crazy IVs. We still have to train its EVs, though. I definitely want to keep Growzilla, Yeter Megeter. We have to keep the Arceus. I also got a Dragapult, which is extremely powerful. So it's officially the end of day 75. I think I have my team that I like. I have Zapdos, I have Dragapult, Deoxys, Dragonite, Yeter Megeter, aka Genghis Khan, or, or uh, something like that. What's his name? Kangas Khan. Yup, totally knew that. And also an Arceus. I had a ton of rare candies from all of the Poke Hunts, so I decided to use them all to get the party to level 100. I needed to train Dragapult and Deoxys so that their EVs were maxed out before we attempted to battle the Elite Four. So I spent the next couple of days doing that. It was officially day 78, and I was ready to battle the Elite Four. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I am nervous. This was my original, like, top goal that I wanted to go through all the gyms and try to beat the Elite Four. Look at that. Look at them just flexing up there. All right, well, here goes nothing. Why, hello there. Uh, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, it says boss. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, wait a second. That means they're level 105? Bro, nobody told me this. Oh, crap, ladies and gentlemen. This is not gonna be good. I knew absolutely nothing about the Elite Four, so I made sure to study up each and every one of them. Bro, she is mega evolving her Aerodactyl. What? What a freak, dude. Nah, that's fine. We got this. Totally got this. Yup, confidence is key. And now I'm dead. And finally, after four whole days of trying to beat the first Elite Four member, I did it. I battled the second member of the Elite Four for literally hours. I didn't even realize, but five days have already passed since I've challenged the Elite Four. It was already day 87 and I was slowly running out of time. I knew I was going to have to change something. I wasn't sure if I was going to change my Pokemon, but the first thing I wanted to try was going down at the center of the Master Ball. If you shift click, it actually is an elevator down to a ton of different move tutors. So I spent all of day 88 just uh, teaching all my Pokemon some new moves. I'm not sure why, but like everybody down here was just a kid. I'm, I, I really, I don't know like what happened here, but they were able to teach my Pokemon some really, really, really uh, important moves in order for me to try to at least be the second Elite Four member. On day 89, I went back to challenge the Elite Four. I needed to defeat the last three members of the Elite Four before I hit day 100. Oh my gosh, finally. Ladies and gentlemen, it took another three days to beat the second member of the Elite Four. That's right. Eat it, nerd. Okay, I'm sorry. You're not actually a nerd, but that was crazy hard. By the end of day 92, I was challenging the third member of the Elite Four. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so this one was just a little bit easier. It only took me two days. So at the start of day 95, we were challenging the final member of the Elite Four. Oh my gosh, please. Please don't be too difficult. I don't know why, ladies and gentlemen, but I have a weird feeling this is going to take me past day 100. But uh, but, 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 but it, it can't. It literally can't. We have to complete this in like under five days. I am so nervous right now. Okay, since this might be the final battle of this first 100 days, uh, yeah, we're just gonna commentate. So this is my strategy, right? I go in with a little stealth rock. That way, every other Pokemon that they send out will get damaged. Also, I think I forgot to clip this, but I did get leftovers from the GTS for all of my Pokemon. That'll make it so if they do take damage, they will slowly regain health. Literally every single Pokemon in the Elite Four has this. This isn't the best matchup, so we're gonna switch out to Bird Pikachu. Another one of my strategies is to try to get an effect on their Pokemon. So that's why I used Thunder Wave, which is uh, perfect because I have this move called Hex, which does a lot of damage. It doesn't affect Chansey. Uh, never mind. It's supposed to do a lot more damage if the Pokemon I'm using it against has a status effect. But uh, yeah, Chansey is weird. It's not looking too good, ladies and gentlemen. My Growzilla is, uh, yeah, it, it's really my only hope. If uh, Groudon goes down, then I'm probably going to lose. Bro, they're mega evolving Alakazam? Are you kidding me? Bruh, 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 what? Oh, all right, cool. Yep, yeah, totally planned for that. All right, we're so close to dying. And yeah, that was uh, yeah, my first loss of the Elite Four. Well, did, yeah, that was my first loss of the final member of the Elite Four, I'll say, because I've lost so many times to the other members. Luckily, it's still only day 95, so I have a couple of days left to try to beat that last member of the Elite Four. Bro, I swear this is impossible. I have died so many times, and we're running out of, we're literally running out of days. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was not looking good. By this point, it was day 99, and I still could not figure it out how to beat the last member of the Elite Four. I honestly didn't want to spend my last day of this 100 days trying to battle the last member of the Elite Four, because honestly, I didn't think I was going to be able to win. So I decided to spend my last day, uh, 
in the casino because I was sad. What's up, old man? Please take my money and make it into more money. Pretty sure that's how casinos work. I was quickly let down when I realized that I do not have permission to access the casino. But there were some extremely cool texture Pokemon in there, so I guess it wasn't a total waste. So instead, I just decided to spend my 100th day hanging out with all of my Pokemon. I know, it wasn't a real productive day, but it was, uh, it was definitely a great way to wrap up this insanely long episode. This isn't even an episode. This is an entire series condensed down into one video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I highly recommend you join this server so that you can join me, especially if we do 200 days. I plan to play on this server a lot more, just making more videos here and there. But if you guys do want to see 200 days, please go ahead and leave a like on today's episode. Also comment down below some new goals and objectives that I can have for 200 days. I know uh, one is definitely to beat that last dude in the Elite Four. For those of you that do want to join the server, I'm going to leave an installation tutorial at the top of the description below. So be sure to check that out and you can actually join and play alongside me. By the way, one last time, here are my coordinates. I'm going to try to get a warp set up so that you can do slash warp jack in order to get to my house. And then I'm hoping by 200 days, we can get so many more people in Cookie City and you guys can build everywhere. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed 100 Days in Pixelmon. My name is Beckbro Jack, and I will hopefully see you guys back again here soon. Peace out, dudes.